Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Paula. Today I'm going to be talking about a very, very important topic, something that is impacting a lot of our nurses and physicians, and something that you don't really hear about. Okay, guys, in this pandemic, you know, as a matter of fact, when, when we got trained as healthcare providers, at no time did we think that nurses and doctors would be literally leaving their homes and going to the job like lambs to the slaughter, knowing that at any point they can contract this deadly coronavirus and come down with this COVID-19. And really, from what we were trained to do good, all healthcare professionals should really do good and do no harm. You know, nurses and doctors leave their homes and their families and they go out on what the people are now calling the front line, which is really a battleground, knowing that at any time you could contract a deadly virus and you could actually die. But that is what nurses and doctors were trained for. It was to care for others who were helpless, who did not know how to help themselves. And so when nurses and doctors go out to work, they are going to help others. They are going to do good, do no harm. And so one thing that no one has ever talked about and I know they're talking about the impact of this COVID-19 and this pandemic on healthcare professionals, but no one has really paid much time on PTSD in the healthcare professionals. Many of you have heard about PTSD and you wonder, what is that? What is PTSD? PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress disorder. It's a mental health disorder that an individual can experience, can have symptoms of which they can have after experiencing something that is life threatening to themselves or to someone else. Okay, PTSD, post traumatic stress disorder. And when we hear about PTSD, we always associate it with you know people going to the battle, you know the army, the, the navy, the, the soldiers who go actually to the battleground. But actually anyone can experience PTSD, even in your own daily lives. If you experience something that is really traumatic to you, let's assume you are a, a woman who is in a, a very violent relationship and you are being abused, and that can cause PTSD. Um, any, perhaps any child who has really traumatic experiences can experience PTSD. As a matter of fact, 3.5 of adults in the US experience PTSD. So it's more common than we think. So our healthcare providers who are out there in the ICUs, in the emergency rooms, taking care of all these patients and they are watching them die. And they themselves, the healthcare professionals, become helpless. It is so traumatic. I'm sure you heard about this physician who committed suicide, who just could not take it anymore. It is extremely traumatic. I can imagine what the nurses and the doctors, the respiratory therapists, and everyone who is involved in the emergency rooms in the in transporting the patients from the home to the hospital, taking care of them in the ICUs, uh, experiencing it is a very dark time in the lives of healthcare professionals. And so, this PTSD we can we're talking about can come and it can go. It can start very late. It can start immediately after experiencing the traumatic event, or it can start late. Yeah. So. What are the signs and symptoms of PTSD? Post-traumatic stress disorder. Some of the things that human individuals experience. So, so let's take for example, the gentleman who's been in battle, 
he's been in a war. You know, PTSD um, patients will tell you that I hear the noise, I hear, you know, the, the, the explosions, they, they hear the crackling sounds and they think that the enemy is about to attack them. They relieve it, they relieve it is something that is very traumatic. Even the experience itself was traumatic, but just going through this PTSD itself is traumatic. And so the signs and symptoms, I, you know, in someone who is so traumatized by watching so many patients die around them. I mean, imagine, you know, hundreds and hundreds of patients are dying, thousands. And perhaps the same emergency room nurses go day after day after day and the doctors, the respiratory therapists who are managing the ventilators go every day and they are watching 10, 11, 12, 13, 20 patients die. That is a nightmare. It is extremely traumatic for a healthcare professional. And so one of the, some of the symptoms is that they relieve so you will find that the healthcare provider who has experienced this may have dreams, nightmares. They go to bed and they, they, they dreaming, like they're thinking that they are back in the emergency room or they are back in the ICU and the, the machines are going off and they, they have nightmares. They have nightmares. They have trouble sleeping. They're on edge. They watch the news and they may see the event. They may see pictures of the emergency room or they may see pictures of the ICU and it triggers that anxiety, right? It triggers that anxiety and, and um, they have this, so, so the person sometimes can become isolated. They have all these negative thoughts, they become sad because there you are and you're trying to help your patients and you cannot help them because it's so many and they are so severely ill and they are dying around you and you feel helpless. And that in itself will trigger PTSD in a lot of our nurses and our doctors. And more attention needs to be paid to that. And these nurses and physicians will need mental health. They need it at the time of providing the care and they will need it for a long time to come. And <clears throat> some of the other symptoms is, um, like I said, they have trouble sleeping, they have negative thoughts, they are sad, they become detached, they may, you know, isolate themselves. So what do you do when you're having the symptoms? You want to talk about it. Yeah, they, there are so many PTSD treatment programs going on right now, especially if you are a veteran, if you're a veteran doctor or you're a veteran nurse, the VA hospital has excellent PTSD programs. And we do not want you to suffer anymore. We want you, if you are having any of the symptoms that you are reliving this emergency room experience, you are reliving the ICU experience or the EMS experience, and you are a veteran, we need you to call the VA hospital and let them know what you're going through. There are excellent programs that they will enlist you in and they will treat you. PTSD can be treated now. It's not what we thought it was before, yeah? So for the nurses who are still in the front line and still going through these traumatic experiences every day, watching the patients die around them and they feel helpless, we want you to do things that's gonna help you. Form social groups, get involved with other people who are experiencing the same thing that you're experiencing. Talk about it. Talk to your colleagues while you're at work. Talk to your colleagues. How do you feel? You know, it is, it's beneficial that you have a morning huddle. Huddle, pray, do anything that's going to relieve that feeling of anxiety, that feeling of helplessness. You know, the feeling that you feel like you cannot help yourself, let alone your patient, right? You want to share your concerns, talk to your loved ones, talk to your family, allow people to break through to you, not isolate yourself, do not detach yourself, yeah? Many times you may need just to cry, 
go ahead and cry. It's okay to cry. And, and I hear every day, you know, people say that this too shall pass. Definitely, this too shall pass. At one point, this is going to go away. It may take a long time. You, we may just have residual, you know, virus in our environment. We know definitely this is going to be a new normal for us. We definitely need to pay a good attention to all the strict protocols and hygiene and proper use of your PPE and make sure guys, nurses and doctors, that you are donning and doffing your PPE appropriately, that you're not touching the outside and contaminating yourself with your own PPE, right? You know, I see some nurses with surgical masks, surgical masks taking care of the COVID patients. If you're going to, if, if by all means you do not have an N95 respirator, double up your surgical mask if you can, okay? It, it, it's a shame that many nurses are crying that we do not have enough PPEs. But, but we have to realize that this is a pandemic. And, you know, no matter what effort is put into manufacturing PPEs, the demand is so high that you cannot meet the demand. When you have one point something million positive and you have hundreds of thousands, you know, hospitalized, if you don't appropriately manage the use of your PPEs, you will always run out. And so please guys, take care of yourselves. Please keep your hands clean. Please don and doff your N95 respirators and your surgical mask appropriately, your gowns. If you can take a shower before you leave the job, please do so. Do not take it home with you, all right? This too shall pass, and we will look back at this pandemic, and many of you will triumph. There is no compensation that they can compensate a registered nurse or a doctor or respiratory therapist for this battle against the coronavirus. Thank you guys for what you're doing. Thank you for taking care of your patients and doing no harm, but doing good. And um, we will go through this. This will pass. Hi guys, this is Dr. Paula. If you have not subscribed to this, to this channel, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I will be coming out with more videos doesn't necessarily have to be COVID-19, it could be anything. We do a lot of women's health education videos, so go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead and tell me what you think about nurses on the front line and tell me what you think about PTSD. And do you know anyone who's experiencing the symptoms? Are you a veteran? Have you called the VA hospital? So you can be enrolled in one of the programs. Talk to me guys, leave a comment at the foot of the YouTube video. Not the Facebook comment, but the YouTube comment. Subscribe, hit that bell, and tell, to, let's talk about it. Let's talk about PTSD in the healthcare personnel. See you guys. Talk to you later. Bye.